guys it is hot it is hot it is hot i didn't realize it was going to be this hot today in los angeles and i'm like how in the hell because i'm leaving hollywood y'all to head to my internship and i swear it didn't feel like this when i left when i left hollywood it didn't feel like this this morning and i get off the bus out here in the valley and i'm just like oh my gosh and it's funny because i was thinking about uh having the clients like doing group out in the park outside with the clients but i'm like when i got out that bus i'm like ain't no way there's no way i'm going to be able to do therapy outside we're not having a group session out here because it's way 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 too hot the weather don't make no sense i don't know what the weather is like where y'all at but i hear in LA, it's 112 degrees. And y'all probably like, why the fuck I'm wearing this blazer? Because I'm actually on break for my practicum. I'm not, doing, I'm not gonna take that long to do this video, actually. This video, I mean, although I, I start talking about the weather, it's really not about the weather, it's really, I'm gonna talk to you guys about my dissertation that I'm approaching. But gee whiz. And I love the outside, I love the outdoors. But Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. It's just like summer just started, y'all. So we still have August and September, which I hear are the hottest months of the summer. So pray for your girl. Pray for your girl. I'm going to try to make it through this heat. But yeah. So that group, outside group ideas, out of the question. Um, actually keeping the clients really cool hydrated they have to stay hydrated because it's way 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 too freaking hot out here y'all it is so i can't even think straight it's so freaking hot i'm gonna get through this video so yesterday on i was on my way home from class and it seems like ideas always come to me when i'm on the bus or the train like the name for my research lab um actually came to me when i was on my on the train on my way to the beach to venice beach and this happened um several months ago actually actually i think it happened was it new year's anyway i made a video about it. you guys go back and watch the video about um my research the name i came up with for my research lab but i was so excited because i was riding on the train to santa monica slash venice beach and I think it came to me, I was on the train. So before I even got off the train, when I got to the beach, I was on the train and this name came to me. And I was just like, there it is. And I was thinking of an acronym for the name for my research lab. And it just, it just came to me, you guys. And it's already out there. So for you guys who don't know, the name of my research lab is called Be Happy. I actually developed an organization around the my lab. So it's not, it's, it's bigger, more than just a lab, it's actually an organization that I founded uh, surrounding my research, but it's called Be Happy, um, spelled B-I-H-A-P-I dot org, and it stands for Black Identity and Health in African People International. So I'm doing so much up under that organization. It's amazing. You guys should go to the website and check it out at behappy.org, B-I-H-A-P-I.org. But yesterday, I had another epiphany on my way home on the bus. And it's beautiful. Like, sometimes people be like, oh, you take the bus? You know, it must suck taking the bus. Like, people always think, the ne you know, negative, right? But me, I'm more of an optimistic person, more positive. And for me, riding... I don't know, like, I guess by, since I was living in New York City before I came out here, I just got accustomed to taking public transportation, you know, so I'm used to it, and it's not that bad, actually, I feel more engaged with the community, being able to interact with people um, of many different socioeconomic status, so it's not just, you know, low income, middle income, even high income, I'm like, I'm telling my coworkers and my colleagues, like, actually, lawyers ride the train, you guys, like, all kinds of people, ride the train so 
you'll be surprised uh, the benefits that you can come across by just riding the public transportation. And for me, you know, I get sparked with many different ideas just riding the train, you know, or the bus. And I'm coming home yesterday from class on my way back to Hollywood. And of course, I have been thinking about this for a while. Like, what should I focus my research on? Which direction should I go with my dissertation and with my study? And it occurred to me yesterday when I was on the train, like, I'm like, bingo, that's what I'm going to do. So I can't tell you guys, unfortunately, the exact study that I'm going to complete, right? I can tell you guys that it falls under implicit racial bias. And I know when I get home, I'm going to take a good shower and gotta say hi Greg. hi what's up Rashonda? but it definitely falls sorry about that it's what's up with the reception okay let me go ahead and finish this so it falls under implicit racial bias i narrowed it down because my practicum research which is based basically a preliminary research study that i did before my dissertation um i just completed my practicum research this year and that focused on acculturation black identity acculturation and black identity in African American parents in the Los Angeles area. And I looked at those two constructs within parents and I looked at implicit racial bias in children. So the participants that this was for my study, the population in which I was looking at basically were pairs of parent and children, black parents and children. And I looked at those constructs within, um, within the Los Angeles area. Parents and children within the Los Angeles area. And I found some interesting stuff, you guys. Um, I wrote it up. I haven't posted it, you know, because my, like I said, my research is still developing. So that was a preliminary research study to my dissertation, which I'm building upon, but I'm going to, I'm narrowing the focus down. And again, I can't tell you guys exactly how the study is and how I'm going to design the study because this is it you guys and it, this occurred to me yesterday that this particular aspect of my study it just occurred to me yesterday how i'm going to collect my data you guys how i'm going to be able to analyze this construct that i'm looking at and push racial bias and i can't tell you guys because it's going to be a, a blind study it's going to be a blind study where the participants don't know what we're studying. So the people in my study, you know, unfortunately, in some research, not all research, but in some research, in order to achieve the objective, the researchers have to use a certain degree of deception, right? You know, it's not that we are trying to lie, but in order to achieve the objective, you can't reveal or disclose certain aspects because by disclosing certain aspects of what you're researching, it's going to uh, dissuade people's perspective. It's going to inform and influence people's uh, responses, you know, in the study. So I don't definitely want to interfere with that and to have um, by through informed consent give too, too much information to my participants that it affects the way they respond, you know, in the experiment, in the study. So I have to use a certain level of deception, unfortunately, but it's going to be justified, you know, and getting this through IRB is going to be amazing. Like I told you guys my experience with IRB, which is basically um, a committee that every institution has and is designed to protect their welfare and the safety of research participants. So it stands for Institutional Review Board and they approve all research studies. So all research studies have to go through IRB for approval, especially working with human subjects. I don't think animal subject studies have to go through IRB, but I know for sure humans, you know, because that's what the IRB for, is for, is designed for, the protection of human participants in research studies. So I told you guys about my first study and how I went through, you know, the process of going through IRB actually has some difficulty because um, 
of the nature of my study, what I'm looking at, not only that, but the population being that I was working with little children, preschoolers, you know, it's a very vulnerable population. And certain constructs I was looking at, they considered it to be kind of risky. You know, that it, it poses a potential um, risk for certain, certain participants, um, being that the nature of the questions could, um, could cause some discomfort, you know, within some of the some of the participants of my study. But it turned out that it went well, and there wasn't much dis discomfort experience. Um, but when there is a risk, when your research study poses a potential risk to participants, then you have to basically justify. You have to come up with a rationale, justification on why you're choosing that approach and what you're going to do with the discomfort, like how I'm going to manage that and, you know, have to provide some for how you're going to deal with that, which I did. And it went well. And so with this, you know, being that I'm using deception, that's kind of like a red flag in the eyes of IRB. And so I have to come up with a rationale and justification, which I've already done in my mind anyway, on how uh, I'm going to justify using deception in my study, you know. But I do believe that the ends justify the means. So it's just going to be beautiful. I'm really excited about it because it's just amazing. I'm, I'm very thankful that I have a very creative mind. You know, being that I'm a writer, I'm an author, I'm a creator, I'm a visionary. I have, my mind works in so many different ways. And the fact that when I was riding on the bus yesterday coming home, I came up with this idea to design a certain, this study in a way that I can achieve my objective um, using uh, the blind technique, you know. And some studies are double blind, meaning that the participants are not aware of what's being measured. Neither is the researcher, the principal investigator, which that would be me, I'll be the PI in the study. But I am going to be aware of what's being measured in research. However, my participants will not be informed, unfortunately, until the end. You know, until the end of the study, then they will know, okay, this is actually what she was looking at, but I had to use a cover so that they don't present or conform to certain ex, you know, expecting answers that they expect that I want them to produce. You know, because if I if you tell researcher tells people that okay, hey, I'm looking at this, then they are going to try to present certain answers that they expect the researcher, you know, to be seeking. Or even the opposite. You know, they don't want to present themselves in a certain way in front of the researcher. So you guys will see. You guys will see if you guys decide to participate in my study. I think that my target market, though, I mean, my, see, look at me. My, that's my business mind speaking, you guys. You guys know that I'm, I'm in the business world. So sometimes, like, I, there's an overlap and I, it's hot, you guys. It's hot. That's what it is. But my specific population of interest is going to be males men so i'm looking at men men you guys i need men for my study and i think i'm going to open it up to men from all different races ethnicities and backgrounds so that's this is going to be interesting and not only that but i'm also going to get permission to record so oh my gosh i can't wait you guys so you guys can see because I feel like with research, you know, much of it is reserved for people in academia, right? So people, research usually is limited. You know, we have limited access to research, unfortunately, you guys. Like the public has limited access to research because these journals have certain private subscriptions where they don't allow everyone to access the research findings. However, Although my research is going to be published professionally in an academic journal, you know, I want my research to reach the masses, to reach the public. And in doing so, I think the best way to do that is to create a video. I'm all about video production. And I like, you know, I like creating. I like creating films. So I'm definitely going to make a documentary around my research 
so that it can get more publicized and out to the general public, you know, because most of you guys don't have access to these journals. You have to have a certain subscription. Most For most people, you either have to be an, uh, um, an employee at an institution, academic institution, or a student to access these journals. You know, the public doesn't have access to them. So I'm just excited, and I have to go ahead and this video, because you guys can just look at this. Look, I want to break and look, look, look. I'm sweating. Oh my gosh. I'm melting out here. So I gotta go. But I just want to share that with you guys. That's a quick little update about my progress so far, my PhD program. It's amazing. I'm on track. I'm finishing up my second year as a PhD student. I have five more weeks left in this second year. Then my third year begins in August. I'm so excited. I'll be starting a totally different new practicum at a new practicum site, working with a totally different population where I work with now, than I work with now. I actually work with um, adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and mental illness, and I'm in the valley now. So that's my first practicum. My second practicum is gonna to be totally different population, another side of town of LA, totally different uh, population. So it's gonna be really interesting. Can't say too much, but you know, as we as the days pass, as the months pass, the weeks pass, then I'll be able to share more. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm so excited! I actually talked to my supervisor, I've been in in conversation with her um, recently, and I'm really excited. Like it's just amazing to see how things are just progressing, and that before you know it, I'll be finished with my PhD. Because again, as I'm approaching my third year of my PhD program in clinical psychology. I only have four more semesters left, you guys. Four more semesters. And within those four more semesters, I will be completing my dissertation, which is the most important part of my dis my most important part of my PhD is the dissertation, you guys. I'm excited about dissertation. Why? Because it involves writing. And I'm a writer. I love to write. I'm an author. And I, I like this part. I talk to my colleagues and my, you know, my um my other students in the program, right, my classmates, and they're like, ah, I'm not so excited about the dissertation because it does involve writing. It's like writing a book. You know, the lit review is like a book, basically. And I'm like, y'all don't want to write a book. You know, this is going to be your work, your research that you've, you've done, and your study. You can show the world what you have. You know, this is just an accumulation of what you've learned, what you've gained, over the years while you've been a PhD student, you know, because when you're in a program, they make you take all these different kinds of classes, right? But it's like when you get towards the end of the program, that's where you narrow your focus and you begin to hone your skills, you know, and focus on the area that you feel mo most passionate about, you know? So while I love psychology and many different aspects of psychology appeal to me, whether it's child psychology, general psychology, um, forensic psychology, clinical, so many different aspects, assessment, you know, there is a certain niche within psychology that is of interest to me. And this, this is the reason I'm so excited because this is where I get to really focus on that niche with working on my dissertation. And not only that, but once I finish it, it's a product, you know, the dissertation eventually becomes a product that you publish that you give to the world, you share it with the world. And so I'm really excited about that. I'm looking forward. I'm really excited about moving forward with my dissertation. I already have my dissertation chair. And now I'm actually getting ready to build my uh, committee, you know. And I've talked to one of my professors about joining my committee. And he said yes. He's like, because, you know, he is really well rounded in the area of social psychology, social, social, uh, 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 uh. he's very well-rounded in the area of social psych, which my research kind of tapers along the, that, those lines of social psychology. And um, so he agreed to be a part of my committee, and I'm thinking about bringing on two more committee members. I need an editor, someone who's going to be able to look over my manuscript and, you know, tell me what I need to tighten up, what I need to fix. So I think I have someone in mind for that because there is one professor who's very stickler. I think the same professor, you know, who wanted to get on my back about APA citation 
you know, at, when I was my freshman in the program, like, I think it's a good thing, right, to be very stickler about the technical details. So I might bring her on as the editor for my manuscript, my dissertation, because she has an eye for those kinds of details, which is really important, especially when it comes to getting published in a professional journal professional psychological journal like those kinds of details matter making sure that your manuscript is it fits within APA guidelines you know there are certain technical guidelines that none of you guys care about but they do care about within the profession to make it to make your work appeal um, or appear as if it's you know it's real it's, it's, it's legit you know it has to fit within certain guidelines and certain format so I have a person for that and I may bring on one more person just as a consultant I'm excited it's just a matter of time the time is ticking and I just can't wait I can't wait to really put my ideas onto paper and begin to flesh out my methods and to begin to construct my assessment because part of it of my research and my study that I'm about to embark upon there is an assessment within that that I'll be creating I just, I can't say no more. I just got to go ahead in this video, you guys. I don't want to say too much. But, um, y'all, I got to get, I got to find me a beach to go to. I got to get into some water. It is hot. It's hot. It's hot, y'all. <sighs> pray for her. Pray for your sister. Just because it's hot out here, y'all. Woo, I'm just wiping off sweat off my face. But let me go. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. And I'm feeling great. I think I need to celebrate. Yes, yes. <laughs>